Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. Take a look at these markets, doing it from a neoclassical perspective. That means each time we're asking ourselves what happened today and what might it tell us about the coming days. I do this show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday. It's broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time. It's archived on YouTube. It's under the channel L.A. Little. If you haven't subscribed and you want to, just reach up in the right-hand corner and do so. Anytime I push content, you'll get a notification. Let's take a quick look at the numbers, see what happened here today. Uh, when I'm looking this over, I see Hong Kong up big. Uh, Japan down a little bit this morning. They've actually bounced back a little bit. Uh, what do we got here? Dollar down. Uh, Europe. I thought Europe was uh, up more. I guess Europe gave some up towards the end of the day. CAC's got a nice big bounce, uh, almost a percent across the board. That led to us being up, but we gave it all up by the end of the day, uh, down uh, on the day, except for the Russell. Uh, important to recognize that Apple's not feeding this thing anymore. And that was a pretty good reversal today. We're going to take a look at that. Gold, silver, both of them uh, pop higher. We're doing all this in front of the Fed, right? And so with the Fed on tap and with the Bank of Japan on tap, both of those uh, start their uh, deliberations tomorrow and uh, will announce, uh, make announcements on Wednesday. When they do make their announcements, I think we're going to feel it in the currencies uh, probably uh, most uh, effectively. Uh, we'll see what comes uh, from that. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, with currency moves, typically you get faster moves in the bonds and eventually in the uh, equities as well. Uh, usually when the Fed comes out and does whatever the Fed's going to do, you want to pay attention to what the currencies are doing because a lot of times they can tell you something. If you look at the uh, dollar here, you know, the dollar's really in a big range. It's been in a range for quite some time. There's, there's kind of like, you know, two parts of this range. It's getting a little harder to see, but it's kind of, you know, the, the half of it has been down here and the other half's been up above it. And it's probably easier to see on a different chart. But anyway, you're popping back up. You're coming back in these highs. And this is kind of a critical area again. It's like, can it get higher or not? And if I pop it over here to weekly, we can actually see it a little bit cleaner. You can see the top of this big bar, right, this big high volume wide price spread bar. That's kind of the top of the range in my mind. And we probably draw it in about right there. And then you can double that up. That will give you the top of the range. And you can see on this one, it's got a ways to go to get back up there. About 2510, 2520 or so. You're sitting about uh, a good percent away from that. Um, it's, that's, that's a pretty good move to get up there. And I think this is going to be uh, the chart that you're going to want to watch uh, when the numbers come out. And it doesn't want to sell off yet. You know, it can't really get anything to the top side. And the dollar should get stronger if uh, the Fed uh, looks like it's going to move on interest rates, or actually does, or if the Bank of Japan, um, to some extent, the Bank of Japan lessens or is able to devalue the, the uh, yen again. Uh, that yen, I, I wrote an article on it, that yen is going to be something to watch because you know, the central bankers, uh, to some extent, people are starting to think they can't keep this going. They don't, they've run out of ammunition. And if you look at the yen, you know, the ideal for the Japanese government and the uh, central bank is to bring this thing down, not up. And it's been going up ever since back here when they introduced negative interest rates. So... I think this is going to be the, the kind of a sleeper place you want to be watching. Still doing a bearish retest regenerate. It's got up there, got up over it, and that's typically not what happens on the first visit back after a long pause. Uh, if, if I, you know, if, if, even if this thing's going to go higher, you would think it would come back into probably as deep as here, right, and then get the move back up. So I'm... I'm kind of suspicious that somehow, some way, the Bank of Japan is going to do something that's going to make people want to sell the yen and not buy it. But at the same time, they're right at the edge, knocking on the door again. And if they get over it, I think that's going to cause some uh, consternation in equities. Let's uh, look at gold real quick. Gold over under can't get a bounce if you look at it on the weekly it's right at this ledge area uh, this is kind of a critical spot and again a lot of these things are setting up at critical spots coming into the news 
And so if we see gold uh, start to push down, right, the next level is down into here where you see the green zone, the buy zone, or shall we say the anchored support zone. And so gold also, uh, just like gold stocks, having a tough time of it here and uh, looking kind of looking shaky, shall we say. Let's go to the equity markets. Uh, today was an uh, interesting day uh, for two reasons. One, last week they couldn't break this thing down. And what I mean by that was the S&P, if you look at the S&P itself, the S&P was down here four days in a row trying to hammer out those lows and never could get it done. The reason for it wasn't the S&P. The reason for it was the NDX, and that was because of Apple. And so the NDX, instead of going down, started powering back up, even though the S&P was laying low and couldn't get anything done. Now, what this was doing was coming in to test these swing point highs. You had three of them all together, right? Today, you get over them, you go back underneath them. You actually have a little bit more volume on them all except for the last one, right, this one here. So you had more volume than these two, but you fell. So you fell on three tests, uh, three tests, three swing point tests underneath. The fact that you did okay volume says you'll probably try to come back, but I doubt we're going to come back immediately. And why is that? Well, because you did an over under on these uh, two bars, lighter volume. I think you're going to get a little pullback first. I'm not thinking big. I'm thinking back into this area, right? Coming into these bars maybe back into these lows somewhere in here and i think that's where you'll see them try to buy it again in front of the fed whether that's tomorrow or whether that's the morning of the fed news that's the ndx uh, apple's not going to provide the juice now it's already done its job and that's to keep these markets afloat you have the same situation here on the uh, broader composite gets over this swing point high and fails but it has more volume again over under on the big volume that says this thing's going to probably try and pull back as well finally if we look at the russell uh, the russell itself gets over these highs uh, from uh, uh, monday and tuesday of last week less volume gets over them fails to stay over them subtle not a big thing i think the more important thing is not that i think the more important thing with the russell is it's doing the uh bearish retest regenerate right and today it actually got over it and stayed over it again so that's the um top of that was uh what is that one two three oh almost twelve thirty one today you close it at twelve thirty two and a half so you get over it you can stay over it another day then that would say okay we're going to actually try and then make it back towards the top how do I feel about these markets? I told you last night, I think for the most part, these markets are set up to try and work their ways higher. Whether that comes after some sort of a pullback or not remains to be seen. I think you have to um, you know, manage your portfolio with that expectation that that's certainly a possibility, but manage it from the perspective that this thing probably is going to try and work higher. Switching over to Europe, uh, we get a little bounce here. No volume. Stays over uh, Friday's highs, though, so that's kind of a positive. Yeah, this could push a little bit higher. Let's look at the other two. Uh, we saw a big move in the CACs. Let's look at the DAX first. Inside bar, nothing there. Let's look at the CACs next. And it gets over. So SMI and uh, the CACs get over. CACs is coming into a swing point low bearish retest region, though. So it can get higher. So it looks to me like Europe actually is going to be decent and positive tomorrow. What do I think here? Well, I, th I think it's going to be a tough road immediately before I tackle that. Let me grab a stock that uh, one of the viewers asked that I take a look at. It's called SEM, Select Medical Holdings. Uh, the comments with this was uh, it looks like it might be a buy. And, um, and I don't remember if he said intermediate term or not, so we'll just look at all of them. Got over the swing point high, had suspect volume. That's what the red is all about. Um, doesn't look too bad, though. So anyway, you go over back under a little less volume. You're coming back in to test an immediate retest regen. Now, when I talk about retest regenerate, what that says is that you can still be, quote-unquote, bullish 
if you test the width of that whole bar, and usually when you come back within six bars, you're going to try to test the lower third of that. Well, that's a long way down on this thing. So it just so happens there's another swing point high inside here. Um, and so that retest, I would think, uh, would be really a test into this area if it gets that deep. Now, let's look at the other piece of this, and that is that this is typically when you get a big wide price spread bar, that typically holds price for some period of time, and it has done that, right? You've had a you know a good, uh, I guess this is, what is this, about seven weeks or so to the sideways here inside this range. You tested on the bottom of the range, right? Couldn't break it down. You're testing on the top of the range now. Will it hold? Will it regenerate and push higher? That's the question. You don't know that answer yet. So you can't commit to it as of today. What we want to do, though, is ask ourselves, is this likely to work higher or not? And to answer that, we go to the weekly. And I don't see, I don't see any negatives here on the weekly. This looks to me like it's going to try and test that high. And so that's a positive. Let's look on the monthly. And really no tells here on the monthly. So... I think the jury's out. So what I would be doing with this particular stock is I really wouldn't be trying to buy it here. I would be waiting to see how this trades. In other words, are we going to come right back into this range and stay in it, or are we going to regenerate? So what I would be looking for is let it get back inside here. Let it come back into this group of uh, trades that were in this area. Right? And if it does come popping back out of here, that's when you want to buy it off the retrace and quote unquote the regenerate folks uh we got another day before all the announcements uh, i think you're going to see a little pullback tomorrow whether it holds for the whole day is a different question i don't think you're going to see big movement in front of the fed position squaring at best uh, and people going to be hanging on and waiting for the ride have yourself a great one thanks for joining me take care i'll see you next time